We're on the June 09 exam, page 3. Question 9. A half kilogram cart is rolling at a speed of 0.4 meters per second. If the speed of the cart is doubled, the inertia of the cart. It's kind of a trick question. You're going to think of momentum as mass times velocity. I double the velocity, I double the momentum. However, inertia deals with the mass of the cart. In order to change the inertia, you have to change the mass. So if the cart's mass stays the same, its momentum stays the same. If we were to double the mass, we could double the momentum. But this question deals with inertia. So we select unchanged as our answer. Question 10. Two forces, F1 and F2, are applied to a frictionless horizontal surface as shown. So let's look at this. I've got uh, two force, two newtons going that way, 12 newtons. So my net force acting on this block is 10 newtons uh, in that direction in case it comes important. If the magnitude of the block's acceleration is 2 meters per second squared, what is the mass of the block? Well, F equals ma, m equals F divided by A, 10 newtons, 2 meters per second squared. A mass ought to be about 5 kilograms. Question 11. Which body is in equilibrium? Equilibrium means that the sum of the forces acting on it is equal to zero. There's no additional forces. Satellite orbiting the Earth, uh, that's constantly changing its direction. It requires a constant force. Uh, that's not equilibrium. A ball falling freely towards the surface of the Earth is, in fact, uh, accelerating. A car moving with a constant speed along a straight level path. The engine gives it a force in one direction, force of friction in the other direction. And if it's a constant speed, those two forces are equal. Therefore, this is in equilibrium. Project out the highest point in its trajectory is essentially a ball falling freely towards the center of the Earth. Question 12. What is the weight? Now, weight is the force of gravity. It's a special name for the force of gravity. common name for the force of gravity is weight. And we know that uh, if we have planetary bodies, we have an equation. However, this equation is going to come in useful. The acceleration due to gravity is the weight divided by the mass. So if the acceleration due to gravity is the weight divided by the mass, the weight it would be equal to mg. 2 kilogram mass, so 2 times 9.8 is right around 20. Question 13. A 70 kilogram cyclist, mass of 70 kilograms, develops 210 watts of power. Power is 210 watts. Uh, pedaling at a constant velocity of 7 meters per second. Velocity is 7 meters per second. It's going east. What average force is exerted on the bicycles to maintain this constant speed? There are several variations of the power equation. Work over time, force times distance over time, and force times velocity. We have velocity, so we can say power is equal to force times velocity, or force is equal to power divided by velocity. So 210 watts divided by 7, that looks like uh, 30 to me. Question 14. The gravitational potential energy with respect to Earth um, that is possessed by an object is dependent on the object's... Well, the formula for potential energy is a mass times the acceleration to gravity times the change in height. Let's see what our choices are. Potential energy, mg delta h. Uh, its acceleration, no. Its momentum, no. Its position, that would be its height, I would say that. And its speed, no. Question 15. As a ball falls freely towards the ground, its total mechanical energy. Well, in physics, total usually remains the same. And so um, it's got potential energy. As it falls towards the ground, it loses potential energy, but it gains kinetic energy, such that the total mechanical energy remains the same. Question 16. 
a spring with a spring constant. That's K. You can look it up if you need to. Uh, 4 newtons per meter. 4 newtons per meter. It's compressed by a force of 1.2 newtons. What's the total elastic potential energy? Potential energy in the spring. Well, the potential energy in a spring is 1 half kx squared. K is the spring con. X is the distance it's been stretched. We don't know x. However, the force on a spring is equal to kx. So we have k, we have f, we could find x, and then we could use this equation. So it'll take a little bit of math here. All right, f equals kx, x equals f divided by k. The potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared. I get out my calculator. I find that x is equal to 0.3 meters. I square it, multiply that by k again, which is 4, then take half of that, and I'm getting uh, 1.8 joules. Question 17. A distance of 1 meter separates the centers of two small charred spheres. Spheres exert gravitational force G, FG, and electrostatic force FE on each other. If the distance between the spheres is increased, the gravitational force and electrostatic forces will represent it as. Well, the gravitational force is uh, G M1 M2 over distance squared. And the electrostatic force is KQQ over distance squared. So whereas everything else is staying the same, we're just going to represent the top portion with F and the bottom with distance squared. 3 squared is 9. So both of them would be reduced to a ninth. This indicates it would be greater. It's gotten further apart. They'd both be weaker. That's if you don't square it. This is if you do square it. Hope you squared it. Question 18. The electrical resistance of a metallic conductor is inversely proportional to... Let's get the equation. And resistance is directly proportional to the material of resistivity, directly proportional to the length, and inversely proportional to A, which is the cross-sectional area. A cross-sectional area. So inversely proportional to cross-sectional area. These can be easy. Question 19. In a simple electric circuit, a 24 ohm resistor resistor is 24 ohms, is connected across a 6 volt battery. Voltage is 6 volts. What is the current in the circuit? Well, electrical resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. So R equals V over I, therefore I is V over R. 6 divided by 24, I'm going with 0.25. Question 20. An operating 100 watt light bulb, so the power is 100 watts, is connected to a 120 volt outlet, standard household voltage. What's the total electrical energy used by the lamp in 60 seconds? So the time is equal to 60 seconds. Well, this is partially a vocabulary question. If you find that work in electricity is also called electric energy. Energy is the ability to do work, and electricity, uh, electrical energy, the ability to do electrical work. So you have several formulas for electric energy. One is power times time. Well, I have power. I have time. I'm going to use that one. I don't have current. I don't have current. I don't have resistance. I could find these things, but there's no need. Power times time. So electrical energy is power times time, 100 times 60 would be uh, 6,000, and there is 6,000. Now these look easy as I sit here and do them, but I'm just using a systematic method of looking up formulas and plugging in my knowns. Anybody can do it. Hopefully you can.